Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habitu fillah A beautiful question was asked from one of our brothers And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless us and bless him And increase us and increase him in khayr Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen and bless us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm and nafi, ruskin tayyib, wa amin al-mutakabbil, and amin ya rabbil alameen. So the brother asked, he said, basically, after having been involved in many gatherings and the company of people who have been involved in a lot of controversy and people who stir up a lot of controversy. So there's a difference there. And that's why I said stir up and I said involved. The one who is involved in controversy, that means they're engaged in debating and arguing, make it make it takfir of people. And this is what you find from the takfiris. And this is what you find from people who involve themselves with making tibdir without the right to do so. Meaning that they don't have the knowledge and the prerequisite knowledge to do so to engage in these affairs. And what I mean by the one who, uh, so that's the one who engages in these affairs, then there's the one who promotes these affairs. So then there are those individuals who actually, a part of their dawah is causing fitna and confusion. And this is what you see from the Tekfiris, especially like we saw in the case of Abu Hamza Misri, Abu Qatada, Abu Qatada uh, Filistini. Um, Al Faisal, a Jamaica, and the, most of these all were in the UK. And then we have plenty of them in America as well. And so you see that the usul of their dawah, the root of their dawah, the origin of their dawah, the foundation of their dawah is controversy. They make takfir so much as, as the way we drink water, they make takfir. They will make takfir of three individuals as I took three sips of water. And this is no exaggeration if you've listened to their lectures and their tapes. And for those people who were in their companies and sat under them will know. Likewise, there are individuals who are very extreme in the way they try to present the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah. And as we mentioned countless times, that the proof or the substance uh, the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. And with that being the case, so so those people who, for example, say they're Salafi, when in fact they might be a part of a Hizbi group or a Hizbi organization, or they might be Tekfiri, or they might be really a Khwani in their leaning, it's not sufficient that they claim the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah, but rather we see it, what is their reality? Is there reality in their practice? Is there reality in their understanding of the Aqidah and methodology uh, of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and the manners and all of the aspects of the religion which makes up a Sunni, which makes up a Mu'min, which makes up a believer in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala? Do they have those characteristics or is it just a claim? So this is very important. So this particular individual said he had spent time involved in wasting time with debates and so forth. But then he's come with a very beautiful question and he has left that. He said, I want to ask for some nasiha uh, from yourself. Please can you give some advice, uh, whichever is easiest upon you. And he mentioned the YouTube or written form on learning the basics of usul, of the religion and importance of learning the Arabic language so that one can have first-hand access to the ulama of Islam and Salafiyya. This is a fantastic question and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless him with tawfiq in this matter. So, what I will say first and foremost when we talk about usul, that usul has different meanings with the different fanun or the different sciences in Islam. So for example, when they say the usuliyin, they are referring to uh, the people of uh, Usul of Fiqh in general. And where much of this science in Usul of Fiqh 
was actually propagated by people who were Ashari or had other uh, deviant creeds. However, this fin or this science is not restricted to them. Ahl Sunnah Mawjood and Ahl Sunnah has many ulama that have written, and of course, the first of them being Imam, uh, Imam Shafi'i in his book Al Um, or uh, in uh, in Al Risala or uh, Al Um. And with that being said, a soul of the religion that the brother is referring to and that we're more concerned with and of course that usul of fiqh is a part of that as well or is uh, is a part of the science which helps you to understand that usul of deen the usul of the religion we're talking about predominantly ittiqad you know creed uh, aqidah you know the the pillars of iman the pillars of islam and even mu'amalat and fiqh that which is pertinent to your practice, like tahara and salat. These are also uh, referred to as a suladeen. So, as some of the ulama mention, because it just depends on the context, but in the context of what you're talking about, sul of the religion, it's referring, it's in reference to also fiqh, as well as aqidah, and as well as uh, the minhaj or methodology uh, of those sciences and the minhaj and methodology of da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because someone can have be well grounded more or less in their aqidah and in fiqh and fall into errors in their minhaj in da'wah in their methodology of da'wah they could go with jama'at to tabliq but yet they could be very grounded in aqidah but there's some khalal there there's some shortcomings there for them to uh, engage in that form of da'wah so, as far as usul of the deen, advice for that, then I guess that the best advice would be as some of the ulama, like Imam Muhammad al Wahhab said in his treatise, Al Usul al Thalatha, I'lam rahimakallah, inna hu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al ula al ilm, wa huwa ma'rufat Allah, wa ma'rufat al Nabi, wa ma'rufat al Nabi, wa ma'rufat Islam, deen al Islam bi adilla. So he began, he said, uh, may Allah have mercy upon you. No, may Allah have mercy upon you. Verily, it's an obligation for us to know four things. So this is talking about the usul of the religion here. This is in a very general sense, the usul of deen. He said, al al He said, the first thing is knowledge, which the questioner is asking about. And then he defined what knowledge is. Uh, he said, It's knowing Allah, so that's tawheed. Tawheed al uh, Tawheed al Rububiyah, Tawheed al Uluhiyah, wa Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. So, then the first thing that you want to concentrate on, as far as the Sul al Deen, is really you're going through the books, uh, those fantastic books, and Aqidah like Usul al Thalatha, Quiet al Arba, we just did Nawaqid al Islam, uh, and Kitab al Tawheed. And most of those books really deal with. Tawheed al-Ibadah. Most of their focus is Tawheed al-Ibadah. Although they deal with other aspects of the religion and Usul al I will highly recommend to go to that book, read it, read it many times, memorize it if you, if you can, and listen to some of the explanations of some of the, the students of knowledge that have, have recorded the rules of it, unless you can go to the ulama. If you cannot, then also the explanations that have been translated in English, go to that. And that will give you a good uh, grounding, especially if you memorize and, and understand that text, then it will give you a good, some good basics in some of the usul and aqidah related to tawheed and related to issues of ibadah and worship. And likewise, to ground yourself is other uh, sciences would be to also the fiqh, you know, get, uh, you know, find durus and lectures that are translated that go through whole books of fiqh if you can, but especially being grounded in tahara and salat and uh, zakat to the extent that you have to pay zakat 
and fasting, of course, because we all have to make Som Ramadan, and those other aspects of the, uh, especially related to the pillars and the Hajj, and uh, those, especially the fiqh of uh, ibadat, as they say. So those kind of things are a part of your usul, of uh, your 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 foundation that you need to establish with the religion. And likewise, the Imam, when he was mentioning, so he said, uh, So he said, and knowing the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so this comes to reading and studying some seerah. I don't think, unfortunately, we have a lot of people, and especially a lot of Salafis in the English, who are really doing a lot of work in, in, in seerah. So if you can find some, then this is fantastic. If not, then read some of those books that have been translated in the seerah, like uh, Rahik al Makhtoun is very good uh, and, and, and basic and gives you can give you a good tasawwur of, uh, of uh, the, the, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And likewise, the Sunnah, in general, books of of uh, related to uh, you know Hadith, reading Bukhari and Muslim, reading Bukhari and Muslim, reading Riyadh Salihin for uh, manners and and you know to help to help strengthen the heart. Arba'in and Nawawi as well. That's very grounding you in the Usul of Deen. So it's very important. Those kind of books. Uh, we cannot do without and they are a foundation and a fundamental part of our understanding Islam so becoming familiar with those ahadith and that will help you to have ma'raf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he said wa ma'raf al din al-islam bi and he said in knowing the religion of Islam with its textual proofs and that goes back to the fiqh that we mentioned but it's going back to those core texts, of course, it's which, which is Kitab Allah, or Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, memorizing and understanding as much as you can. And that will help you to ground yourself in the Usul. Those things will help you in the Usul. And now there's so much translated works out there, and especially from Ahl Sunnah, the Salafis, Walillah al Hamd, have done fantastic works. There are so many Durus out there that are translated on the website. Uh, and I'm not that familiar as much because I, I, you know, I've been listening to Arabic lectures for so long. But I know that the Mektaba, Mektaba Salafi, does have a lot of excellent audios. And I think they have something called Salafi Audio or something like this. And there's so many new Salafi organizations that have done Durus, you know, the various Masajid in America and in the UK. There's fantastic works. Medina.com has Durus. Um, uh, Troid has Durus, Alum.org or Net, they have Durus. So all of those Salafi organizations, regardless of however you feel about the different parties and the different camps and their animosity between them, they definitely have a lot of, a plethora of Durus out there. And I would advise to focus on those things which are going to ground you in your soul and not get as caught up in the refutations and stuff. And again, Someone who's listening to me, who's a person of understanding, will understand what I said. The people of Bid'ah and the people who of, of Fitna, they will take from that and say, hey, he, he, gave, he runs from refutations. Well, as you see, I'm speaking about this now. This is not what I meant. And it was very clear from my statement. But Ahl Bid'ah make ta'wil fasid all the time. Wallahu musta'an. And so also what I will say as far as uh, excellent advice, that was given to us when we first, when I first went to Yemen, Imam Mukbil, he had a sitting, and it was, uh, I think it was predominantly Americans, if I recall, and, and it was Westerners, which was a small group of us, and it was at his uh, house, and I recall one of our beloved brothers, and I won't mention his name, so he doesn't feel uncomfortable, but he was the translator at that time, because his Arabic, alhamdulillah, was uh, very, uh, he was very proficient in the language even back then. This was 1997. And so a group of us were gathered there, and the Sheikh mentioned three things that I recall. He said, learn the book of Allah. So he said, focus on memorizing the Quran. So this was advice in the in Damaj, in the camp. 
He said, focus on the book of Allah and memorize what you can of it. And then he mentioned the, uh, if I recall, uh, he mentioned the Arabic language. He mentioned the Arabic language. So actually it was probably four pieces of advice, but what I predominantly recall was the three. But he said, uh, he, he mentioned the Arabic language specifically because we were all foreigners trying to learn Arabic and we had different levels. So he said, focus on that. Okay, focus on that, put your effort in that. And then he mentioned the third thing. He said, and be away from Kathar Taqil Qar. This is fantastic and I wish this was recorded. This is what Imam Mukbal said to us. This was 20 years ago. This is 1997 when we went. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon that great Imam who called to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And just me personally in my life, I've never seen, and I've, uh, by the permission and the mercy and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I've sat with many uh, different scholars here in Saudi Arabia and in Yemen. But no one struck me quite like that imam and his his humility because also his his environment and his sacrifice for uh teaching islam and spreading islam and spreading the sunnah of the message of allah sallallahu alayhi, wa alayhi wa sallam, and his tarbiyah of the sunnah i i've never seen anything like it and that is one of the most profound individuals in my that touched my life uh so with his great advice, he said, and so not getting in debates, and you've already said from your question, you've chosen to avoid that stuff, to get out of that stuff. Because wallahi, look, I, I'm gonna, uh, this is a question for anybody who's listening and that have had this experience. Look at all the individuals you can think of from amongst your companions and amongst people you have known over the past so many years. I want you just to reflect on this. Think about every single individual you've, been, you've encountered even if they claim to be Salafi, and maybe they are Salafi, but they have this shortcoming and they have some sinful behavior. Think of every single individual that you had a chance to encounter like this, and if you've known them for a period of time, think of how much they have advanced over that period of time. Have, they, have you seen that they memorized more from the Book of Allah? Have they memorized more from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Did they just, they just have more cut and paste fatwa? Is that what they advanced? Or did they actually advance themselves in the usul of deen? That you actually saw them progress and you saw their behavior change and they became better people. I want you to, to look at that and think about all the individuals you've encountered and gauge on that scale and see what benefit they have now compared to two years ago or how the length of your encounter and I can tell you personally myself I know a lot of brothers who are students of knowledge and I'll say were and some of them are and that I know particular brothers and I won't say their names or make too much ishara to them but I've known them for 20 years and what they were saying 20 years ago they say today and that's not from being grounded in the deen what I say is it's from a lack of growth, meaning that the controversy and the fitna they are involved in from 20 years ago, I know them. I know some of these brothers would go back 20 years, my companions. SubhanAllah, and one particular one has made hajr of me, only recently, now for about a year, about one particular individual. But when I listened to his kalam, his kalam was just jahili. He, he texted me and he just said, very street he used very rough street language and that's okay me and him we can we can bond like that that's okay we can we can we have our own ways of relating to each other but he tried to make it as a refutation and you know just, I, I won't say what he said but the language it showed to showed me and he stayed in that in certain places of and much longer than I did but he didn't have the experience that I was able to have as far as coming to Saudi Arabia and really benefiting and sitting with different ulama and studying in Maracas and stuff like this. And, but I saw there wasn't any change, no growth. No growth. And I've known many brothers that we started out from 97 together. And some of them I see Allah favored them. They memorized the Quran. They memorized so much of the Sunnah. 
and you see it reflected in their behavior as well. And Qawaid al Deen, and they change their positions from humbleness. Because knowledge is supposed to shake you up, it's not supposed to keep you on the same thing you were on the hawk 20 years ago in every mess and no way who can say this but rather we should be growing in the deen and that's what usul and that's what studying is supposed to be as the salaf used to say uh the salaf used to say that the Al-amal thamarat al-ilm. Al-amal thamarat al-ilm. That deeds are the fruits of knowledge. So that's what you want to see, and that's what you want to benefit. So my advice, and I could give you countless other stories. I know brothers here that we were together. Of course, they weren't students of knowledge, Aslan really, but they were alhamdulillah Salafi, and they were engaged so much in the issues, even so much they began to speak about me and we got in about particular, really about Sheikh Ibn Rahim al-Rahili, you know? And I see the same individual, he doesn't know Arabic still. This was five, six years ago. Six years ago now. And you still are not studying Arabic and you live in Saudi Arabia? What? You're still having to get translated? You should have even before then known. I knew Arabic then. I studied with Countess Mashaykh at that point and you you know what what's where's the growth and this is not to make ta'dima myself like the 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 uh, <laughs> ahla will say but i'm trying to give you real examples real examples that of our experience of what we had that's what a, our age we're getting a little bit gray in the beard it's supposed to we're supposed to be able to share that with our younger brothers so my point is is grow a lie you will see people and and i'll tell you in this particular situation so this is going back to your issue, but a little bit off touch. But it's very relevant. Some particular brothers, and this is one of the localities here, so I decided to join a Sharia program. And I graduated from the program, two years. And I learned SubhanAllah so much there because it was a focused program. We finished book and fiqh. We finished in hadith. We finished kitab tawheed We finished... We finished many, many books in uh, uh, in usul of fiqh, Kuwait fiqhia we studied, uh, tafsir, ulum shari, all kind of beautiful uh, uh, tariq ulum uh, shari, and just beautiful and and, and nahu, and subhanallah. In those two years, those guys didn't even learn Arabic. They were still talking about the same. They still had a same mokif with me. I didn't even get with those guys. I see him. Assalamu alaikum. They're my brothers, I love them, but I knew their motive on certain things, and they knew my motive. And they knew that I was going to benefit. So after two years, I got my diploma in the Sharia, benefited my knowledge, took my knowledge on another level, and where were they? They were in the same position. So this, my advice, if you can get the opportunity to study somewhere, study properly, not even just mismatching. You can gain benefit from the durus that we try to put on line and, and all those, uh, there's so many students of knowledge out there that are have a strong level and they're benefiting the people. There are many durus so you can put together something. But it's not the same as if you get a chance to study in a program. So my advice, and this relates to that, going back to the Arabic as well. Get yourself in an Arabic program and do not stop until you finish the text of it. If it's the Medina series, fill it, finish the whole series. Don't stop at book two. Finish book one, two, and three. And if you finish those three books, of course you keep going. But that will give you something, especially if you're grounded in those three books, you, you will have, uh, you'll have access to the Mashaikh, you'll have access to the books, uh, you know, and, and, and you can really advance your Talib al -ilm. And no one can ever take that from you. No matter how they criticize you, no matter how they attack you, no one can ever take what you what you learned away from you. But the shaitan can, and your sins can. So, sticking with the Arabic, sticking on a program, don't waste time by sitting with time wasters. If you have brothers around you that are not bringing you any benefit, all they're doing is backbiting, all they're doing is staying the same in stagnancy. 
then those brothers you don't want to be around. You want to be around with someone who's going to to encourage you. And I'll give you an example of a particular individual who used to encourage me, and we used to do a lot of good uh, thought of an M together and, and remind each other there's a dark going on. And this was the brother, uh, and I don't know how he feels about me now, and may Allah forgive us in him and bless us in him, but uh, the brother Abdul, uh, Abdulillah Lahmami. That in, when we lived in Medina, when I was in Medina, we used to go to a lot of the rules together and he would get me, have sittings with Sheikh Obeid and different things like this. And uh, this kind of suhbah. So for a time we had suhbah. That we had uh, this companionship in ilm. Also my brother, my dear beloved brother Talib Alexander. We had suhbah and we still have suhbah to this day. Even though we're in distance, he's in the UK and I'm in here. We still contact each other almost daily through groups and WhatsApp and stuff. So my point is that good companionship will help you advance yourself. And we ask of all the Almighty to accept our good. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.